Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 108 of the J Situation Podcast. I'm recording this on April 5th, 2022. How you folks doing on this fine spring day? That's beautiful outside. Yeah, I hope you're doing well. I'm doing okay. Uh, you like the photo I just posted for this episode? Oh, man. It's the HK SP5K PDW. That's right. Yeah, we're going to talk about the SP5 and the MP5 and all that good stuff on the episode today. I think it'll be a it'll be a fun topic. I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's that's actually the gun in, in the photo there. That is a new MP5 test host. That's right, for Pew Science. Um, in, in the photo, it has a three lug silencer mount with a silencer attached. That's right. Um, but an interesting thing about that photo is that the three lug mount that is screwed into the back of that silencer is not the three lug mount that came with that silencer. <laughs> it's not. That three lug mount is actually from Gemtech. It's an old, it's an old Gemtech three lug three lug coupler. It is screwed into the back of an SWR silencer because this particular uh, SWR coupler that I have de- detached there in the photo wasn't to HK spec. Yeah, it's interesting, right? You know the so it wouldn't fit. So I had to kind of swap it out. Uh, you know, the three lug system was never meant for silencers. Not a lot of people know that, but uh, we sure do use it a lot. Boy, do we. We use it a lot. You know, my original SWR three lug mount failed in axial uh, shear. Yeah, it failed in shear uh, from recoil impulse creating shock loads. And those the shock loads uh, propagated. Um, you know, the, the steel barrel lugs induced shear failure in the aluminum of the mount. And, uh, you know, launched launched my silencer downrange. That was many years ago, many years ago. But, you know, here we are now. <laughs> I never thought I would tell this many people about that publicly. But, you know, we can talk about that sometime if you like. I think it's a, it's a, it's a pretty interesting phenomenon to happen. I've mentioned it to a, a couple of folks before. Uh, not a lot of people... Uh, speak about three lug mount system failures, but they do occur. And one of the reasons they occur is, frankly, it's the system isn't really designed for silencer use. So, <laughs> so there you go. It's funny how that works. Yes, I have been in the silencer game for a while. And you know where you can get silencers if you are so inclined? From Silencer Shop. <laughs> the J Situation podcast is proudly sponsored by Silencer Shop. You can use their kiosk, do your fingerprints and photos electronically, and you, you cut down on errors. You simplify your silencer purchasing process. That's right. You get a money-back guarantee, no transfer fees, no paperwork errors. It's just you and your silencer with no drama. It truly is silencer ownership simplified. That's right, it is. Uh, secondly, this podcast is brought to you by True Shot Gun Club out of Arizona. That's right. How do they support the podcast, you may ask? Well, it is quite simple. Um, there is a link in the show notes there uh, in every episode, including this one. If you click that link in the show notes, it takes you to their website. If you buy ammo using that link, it helps the podcast. It helps Pew Science. That's right. You can also join their club, their their A-Zone membership. It's like the Amazon Prime of ammo. Um, if you join their club, you, you get uh, free shipping on all your ammunition for for the for the year membership there. And uh, if you're interested in something like that, uh, you you can save some money uh, by using the code word PewScience at checkout, and that will give you twenty dollars off your A Zone membership with uh, True Shot Gun Club. There, yeah. So you win, they win, everyone wins. Okay, you help the podcast out. Hope that helps. And lastly, this podcast is sponsored by. Pew Science. That's right. Pushing the sponsor industry forward one test at a time. It's so great. Visit PewScience.com for the suppression rating. It's the simplest and most accurate hearing safe rating for your suppressed small arms based on true inner ear response of the human being. That's right. Um, from the, from before combustion takes place all the way until all the combustion is gone from the gunshot. It's, 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 it's the entire gunshot. It's the entire waveform is analyzed for you. That's right. The suppression rating is in Section 5 of the Silencer Sound Standard. It's going to walk you through gunshot noise, sort of like Wikipedia, but way cooler. 
There's seven parts. They're all on PewScience.com for you to read. And if you haven't seen it, that's fine. Skip to the suppression rating in section five. It's going to let you know how silencers stack up in comparison to one another with regard to sound at the muzzle and at the shooter's ear. And it's going to give you a hearing safe dose limit for the particular platforms on which the silencers are tested, Okay, directly tied to, to inner ear response. Okay, If the rating is higher, it's going to be better for your ears. If the rating is lower, it will be worse for your ears. That's all there is to it, and you won't find this information anywhere else. The sixth section of the standard contains detailed reviews of all the silencers publicly tested. And if that's uh, scary for you, because frankly, there's a lot of words and graphs, and some people are intimidated by that. I understand. No problem. If instead you would like a quick summary of kind of to, to boil things down for you, skip to the ranking section in section seven. There is a table there you can sort filter and uh, find uh, things that you're interested in and then when you find something you like you click on the links in the table there it'll take you back to the to, to the main um, section six of the standard where you can peruse the reviews to your heart's content that's right you can as always if you are a manufacturer and you would like to use Pew Science for private testing and consulting services, there is a form on the website with which you can submit that inquiry. Your contact information and all test data will be held in strict confidence, unless, of course, you want to release it to the public, in which case Pew Science can certainly help you do that. That's right. And finally, you can support this podcast, Pew Science, and our testing by joining with a membership at PewScience.com. That is a fantastic way to support the effort. It, it really does help. Um, and if you're not into that, or if you want to give extra, uh, there's a donate feature. You know, it's sort of like Wikipedia lets you donate to keep Wikipedia going. Similar here with the Science or Sound standard. There's a donate uh, feature on the on the review page, on the pack, podcast page, on the website. Um you, you can give a lot of it, you can just give a little bit, or you can, you can give nothing at all. It's just there for folks that would like to contribute. And, you know, something that, that costs you no money at all, give the podcast a good rating on your favorite podcast provider. Spotify lets you do that now. If you listen on Spotify, iTunes lets you do it. You know, give a good rating there. And, and what that does is it helps the algorithm understand that silencers are important. And we will... We will make it one step closer to normalizing suppressed small arms. And you know what, guys, just along that topic, I know I say that a lot, but I don't know if you know this, but do you know th did you see that Silencer Central was featured in Forbes magazine today? Uh, today, so I'm recording this on April 5th. So this is April 5th, 2022. Um, there's an article, like at least on the Forbes website, with Silencer Central. There's a silencer company in Forbes. So, I mean, when I say my goal is to normalize press small arms, you know, uh, something like that really, it, it really is congruent with my goal. I, I just thought, I, I told uh, some of my bu my buddies about it. I was like, this is amazing. I don't know if any, anyone else was as excited as I was. Well, I'm mean, probably Silencer Central. They're probably excited. But I was excited because I was like, oh, my gosh, like, what a win. You know, what a win for such a small niche industry, I think. You know, baby steps, right? Okay. All right. I have three topics for you today. Uh, this is probably going to be a long podcast because I have a lot to say. Three topics. First topic, sound signature review 671. That's right, 6.71, the CGS Hyperion with 300 blackout subsonic. Technical discussion. Yeah, that's a, that's a humdinger. Talk about that. Topic two. Pew Science 9mm subgun test hosts. They're rolling in. And what's first up? The SP5K PDW from Heckler und Koch. Yeah, das ist gut. Yeah, from Germany with love, frankly. The fatherland. Yeah, it comes all the way from Deutschland for, to you, for you, for all of us. Super psyched. Real German gun. Just can't get enough of it, man. I should look at it all day, stare at it. <laughs> Topic three, incredible feedback from dealers, consumers, manufacturers, and even YouTube reviewers. Big shout out to Alabama Arsenal and, and, you know, and all the Pew Science members worldwide. I, I, you guys have, I mean, we, we were, we were, we're mentioned in YouTube videos now. We got people telling their friends. It's just getting really cool. And it, it's just it's just something that I think is really, really great. And I like to thank people for doing it. Okay, so I really do mean that. All right. 
without further ado, let's go move into topic one at a time of 10 minutes and four seconds. Okay, got a drink of water here. Man, just, uh, we spent 10 minutes on the intro, you know, and everything, introductions. And uh, let's see if we can finish this in two hours. I bet, I bet we can, <clears throat> theoretically. Let's give it the old college try, as they say. That's right. Topic one, Sound Signature Review 671. The 71st review in Section 6 of the Sonster Sound Standard on pscience.com, the CGS Hyperion with 300 blackout subsonic. That's right. We released this review last week. This is the technical discussion of the performance of the silencer. Um, yeah, I, I bet you guys didn't think this one was coming so soon, did you? Yeah, or maybe you did. Yeah, I'm always, you know, I'm always, I was talking about this last time, but I'm always amazed at the guesses I get during review publication week. Yeah, this time, uh, someone, someone actually did guess correctly. It was only one of you who guessed, but one of you did, and it was a Pew Science member. And th this particular Pew Science member, he's a really deep enthusiast. This guy goes deep. He he's in deep with the science or sickness. There, you can't help it. You can't help him. He's far gone. If you're if you're listening, sir, I'm sorry for your wallet. <laughs> it's you're doomed. You really are. The only way to get out is to completely leave firearms for like a long time, a long portion of your life, and come back. I can tell you from personal experience that is the only way you're going to get out of this. So if not, you better buckle up, Buttercup, because you're going to be in this game for a while now. That guy follows the work closely. He listens to the podcast, and he was right on the money. CGS Hyperion with 300 blackout subsonic. Okay, review 671. You know, we we have a big, well, a pretty big data set hole with 300 blackout subsonic right now. Um, just, you know, if you look in the standard, it, the, there's, I don't know how many reviews I have in there for 300 blackout subsonic published, but it's not nearly as many as, for example, 308 Supersonic. Part of the reason is it the incredible market size for 30 caliber rifle silencers. I mean, that's really really um, one of the main reasons. There's so many. And frankly, we need to know how they perform on 308 because without that information, it's seldom useful to talk about the silencers given that hunting use is a tremendous application that is it's growing. And frankly, you know, for the common gun owner getting into silencers, it's going to be a big gateway. Okay, like it or not. So that's one of the reasons a lot. Some p folks have asked me why I focus on 308 a lot. Well, uh, one of the reasons was technical. You know, first, first people asked, why am I doing bolt guns? And that, that's completely technical reason. And some people asked, why 762 by 51? And I was like, well, it's a hunting application. Um, and it kill, it kills a lot of birds with one, with one stone, and that's why I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. Um, you'll see the big picture eventually, but I know it's it's kind of hard to see the forest for the trees. Uh, sometimes you, you kind of just have to peek your head up a little bit. I know I know you can get down in the weeds easily in this type of stuff, but but just trust me. I think we're on the on the right track, but it has resulted in in a lot of subsonic stuff kind of being put on the back burner. Now. I started, I started doing 300 blackout subsonic and we started learning a lot. Okay. Um, I, I'm currently balancing that demand with the Mark 18 556 testing, which frankly, it's an interesting animal all by itself because the, in, it, well, really the, there's the incredible popularity of not only the Mark 18, which is, it, it, that's just part of it. It's that there's popularity of dedicated 556 five, silencers themselves like that's what people want to know i mean you won't will not believe how many people are interested in 556 five, as a platform to be suppressed and they want to know how it works it's interesting so we're back in 300 blackout subsonic land one second <clears throat> excuse me and yeah so I wanted to dip our toes back in the in the 300 blackout subsonic waters. Well, what better way to do that than with the CGS Hyperion? It, I tell you what, the silencer made waves. 
because overall, in total composite suppression rating, it has the highest highest one tested by Pew Science to date on supersonic 308 from a 20-inch barrel, right? It is barely edged out the dead air Nomad L, you know? And, you know, because th those two silencers are very close in sound signature severity on that platform. Okay, it's not that they sound the same. It's that they're very close in sound signature severity to your ears on that platform. Okay. So, subsonic 300 blackout is a different animal entirely. And, you know, as you've seen from the subsonic review so far, like, you, you know that, right? That's important for you to know. We know that 20-inch 308 barrel performance is not necessarily an indicator of subsonic 300 blackout performance from an 8-inch barrel. Like, we know that. Okay, and in fact, you can look at the data so far and see we've learned that some silencers may perform poorly. I mean, frankly, that's a good word to say, poorly with subsonic rounds relative to how they do with supersonic rifle. Okay, and especially when the when the supersonic rifle is on a longer barrel. You know, I'm looking at you, OSS and Surefire, <laughs> you know, like, you know, the Surefire RC2 for example, on, on subsonic or like the OSS silencers or Huxwork silencers on subsonic. It's, it's not, 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 not as good, you know, really. Um, and you know, for more info on that, you can, you can go and go to the website and check out the 762 RC2, uh, reviews on there, the HXQD 762, uh, look at a supersonic 308 and subsonic 300 blackout for both of those silencers. You can look at it at pewscience.com. I do some comparisons in the later reviews with you guys. So you can, you can see why a lot of times high flow rate silencers have compromised performance with subsonic applications. Um, it's just physics. It's the nature of the beast, but we've seen that. Okay. So this is one of the things we've learned. Okay. This is one of the things we've learned. So we go to the CGS Hyperion, you know, this review, it's actually, it's actually exciting because it highlights something a lot of people I don't think realized about the Hyperion when they first saw the 308 data in review 627. Okay. And then they saw Hyperion data again, the 6.5 Creedmoor in review 637, right? That was a while back. And the reason, you know, the reason we did 6.5 Creedmoor, it was a contracted test and we, you know, had the data and um, CGS wanted to release it. And so I released it. Um, I haven't, since then, I haven't really done any other 6.5 Creedmoor testing just because I just haven't. And frankly, I don't, care right now there's I, th I feel like there's more important things but that was a contracted test uh, much like this one that we're talking about right now and so they wanted me to release it so i'm like okay i'll release it so i did um so you guys saw the the 308 data you saw the 6.5 creedmoor data and yeah sure the sensor was quiet in those reviews but those are supersonic rifle rounds from a long barrel okay that's a different animal uh, you know, than, than, than what we're looking at now. And now you finally see the broad base technology in the Hyperion exercised. All right. In this review, this, this, this review 671, this is 300 blackout now. And it's not only just 300 blackout, but it's with subsonic. And it's not only subsonic, but it's from an eight inch barrel. So we, we, we changed a lot of knobs when we went from 20 inch 308. And what, what did we do for 6.5 cream more was like 22 inch 6.5. We went from those. Now we're going all the way 300 blackout, all the way to subsonic, all the way to eight inch barrel. Okay. And the eight inch 300 blackout is the Pew science proving ground for 300 blackout performance. Okay. I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you use a longer barrel with 300 blackout subsonic, you're using training wheels. Okay? You need a short barrel, 8 inches or less, 
to really exercise the silencer with subsonic rounds to see what it's capable of. Yeah, frankly, you kind of need a seven inch barrel or lower low to really see, but eh, eight inches is good for now. I think I think we're still learning a lot. All right, all right. So let's let's dig into the data. Yeah, and check it out. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna go to pewscience.com right now. I am going to go to the review page here. I'm going to go ahead and log in as a member so I can walk through the member review. Okay, yeah. Logged in as a member. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to go to the member review um, SSS.6.71. CGS Hyperion and Q Mini Fix. Through here, back at Subsonic. Click that. Boom. All right, down there. All right, you can follow along at home if you want. That's right. That's what this is for. Bottom line up front. 72.3 composite suppression rating, <laughs> 69.2 at the muzzle, 68.4 at the ear. Boy, howdy. That's crazy. <laughs> no, it is. It's not normal. That's like super. Um, I Yeah, I, I remember calculating it. And I was like, whoa, that'll get you. <laughs> I was like, I remember. I remember um, doing the calculations. And I was like, huh, <clears throat> that's high. Yeah, not normal. It's really not. Um, this is not normal for this cartridge on an 8-inch barrel, guys. You're getting into some insane suppression territory. Insane, actually. You are now entering the 70 zone. <laughs> that's right. You're getting to that 70 zone threshold. At the muzzle, you're 69.2. Ear, 68.4. You're, you're about to be in the 70 zone at the ear and muzzle that's you're 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 approaching um uh, super duper happy quiet time it, it's you, you're you're actually and there's a there's a name for it i'm gonna scroll up here to the or scroll down rather to the suppression rating graphic in the review you are approaching the extremely quiet zone <laughs> see i named the zones <laughs> because i knew that we we're gonna have to have a word for what we're talking about and I hope those 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 subjective um, terms help. And the semi-quantitative scale there, when, it, when, when we're, you're getting to the extremely high volume fire zone, <laughs> I hope these these terms help uh, help help you qualify the quantitative ratings that I've given you. Um, yeah. So when I say extremely quiet, when it's 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 getting into the extremely quiet zone, I mean it's extremely quiet. <laughs> Like, I I didn't spend a lot of time naming, like picking out names for the zones, but I spent enough time to think about it a little bit, and and I I named them. I think I named them pretty ap aptly. I think if you I think um, if you if you stopped listening to this right now and you didn't read the review, and you've shot a Hyperion with 300 blackout subsonic out of a, a gun like this, you would say, yeah, that was extremely quiet. <laughs> yeah. It's getting it's getting into that zone. It really is, and you're and you got to keep in mind you're getting into that zone with a center fire cartridge. Okay, so let's put it in perspective, right? It's not rim fire. You're not rim fire right now, are you? You're you're center fire. So this is 300 blackout subsonic. This is the cartridge people are killing things like deer with, at, at like at, at 100 yards. You, you you know you know what I'm saying. So, well, I mean, they're killing things at 100 yards with expanding subsonic ammo from discrete ballistics. Okay, for example, um, if you're going to use subsonic at range, it's kind of hard, but it can be done. Now, the ammo I used in this test is also from discrete ballistics. Shout out Powerful David at discrete ballistics. It's their target load that I tested with. It's intended to mimic the external ballistics of their expanding hunting ammo. Uh, it's going to sound... The same. It should sound the same, I think, uh, more or less. So what this data is telling you, what this data is telling you is that if you put the CTS Hyperion on a minifix and hunt with discrete ballistics ammo, whether that be shooting animals or people, you, you're, you're going to be doing so with sound signatures that are quieter than rimfire on certain platforms. Okay, that's, and that's not me, like, you know how sometimes 
you'll hear people talk about silencers, especially before Pew Science was here. And they're like, yeah, man, that was as quiet as a 22. And people are like, nah, man, it wasn't. It was this loud or it was this quiet. And it's like you had these weird peg points. Well, guess what we have now? We have the suppression rating. <laughs> so there's literally a universal scale to use. So now you, you know exactly what um, but based on but based on inner ear response. So you can you can get the actual the actual loudness, can't you? It's pretty cool. Cuz remember, I don't know um if if you've been following Pew Science for a while, remember the rugged Oculus on a small uh, uh, like on a small uh, little 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 short barrel semi-auto 22 pistol, little Beretta 21A with some random ammo I had at the range. Remember that? Guys, that setup is is quieter to bystanders than this but to the shooter firing that little pistol i mean there are actually plenty of silencers on the mini fix with 300 blackout subsonic that are quieter than that little pistol to the shooter you know inclu- including what what's let, let, let's go to the ranking table let's make sure we're not going to butcher, butcher this I'm going to open the rankings table in the new tab here okay what what are we gonna do? All right, we're just gonna go ahead and scroll down to the rankings table as it is. We're gonna sort by ear shooter's ear suppression rating descending. Okay. Wait, is that yes? Perfect. Okay. So I am looking at the table with shooter's ear suppression rating descending sorted. And you can look where you can find the, the, the rugged Oculus in its long configuration on a semi-auto pistol. And, you know, with, with, uh, t- 20, with, with 22 ammo. Okay. And you can see that it has an at-ear suppression rating of 59. Okay, a shooter's ear suppression rating of 59. There are one, two, three, four, five, six things on the table quieter than that so far. The Surefire SOCOM 300 SPS on the minifix, quieter. The Silencer Central Banished 30 Gold on the minifix, quieter. The SIG Silencer, quieter. Then you get to the Hyperion that we're talking about right now, quieter. And the only... Other two things quieter are the same Oculus silencer on a bolt-action rifle in multiple configurations. So, you're seeing, what is it, one, two, three, four. So, four silencers, four rifle silencers so far, the 30 caliber rifle silencers, four silencers so far are listed in this table that are technically quieter to the shooter on a 300 blackout subsonic rifle than a freaking tiny pocket pistol with a 22 silencer okay and that tells you two things one yeah the hyperion is quiet in 300 black blackout subsonic and these and 300 blackout subsonic is a quiet cartridge yeah that is what that says but another thing it tells you is how freaking loud is a beretta 21a little micro pistol little pocket pistol those things suck as silencer hosts i don't i don't i don't think people really understand everyone a lot of people think that just tw- rim fire is always quiet well it's more damaging to your hearing suppressed on that pistol than the the, the hyperion is on a minifix so put it in perspective okay you need to understand that and a lot of people are like, oh that's impossible how no 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 it, it's not impossible there's ejection there's all kinds of problems with that right there's there, a little semi-auto pistol is doing things that a bolt-action rifle is not doing. Okay, so that's important to know. Now, when I, I just talked about the silencers on this list, we had the, the 300 SPS, Banish 30 Gold, the the uh, SIG SRD762 TIQD, and they have, then they have, have the Hyperion. The Hyperion is the quietest on that list. And it's not just a quiet by a tad. Right. It's quieter than the SIG silencer by about half a category, which is non-trivial, actually. And, and so I, I just want to say, like, d- please don't lose sight. I mean, I'm not, I'm not like gushing over this, but I am, I'm being sincere when I say this is not a normal setup. Okay, d- go to the rankings table and sort and look. You, you need, you really need to understand. And it, it as we progress with Pew Science publications, 
you're really going to start to see more context and this is going to this is really good <laughs> okay because everything's on a level playing field and now people really understand what 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 is quiet and what does quiet mean you know you know what i'm saying okay so let's i think that's yeah, that's all I wanted to say about the rankings. I just wanted to put this in perspective for you because, uh, you know, it, it's kind of it, we we kind of jumped a little bit. <laughs> usually, usually don't um, show something so quiet so quick because I had some other stuff to show you. But I was like, you know, some people have been asking for this. It was it was very, God, the demand was crazy, and then manufacturer wanted to publish. It's like, yeah, okay, let's do it. So here we are. <laughs> Can't put the. <laughs> Cat back in the back now. Okay, so let's look at the data now. Go. I'm back in the review now. I'm gonna scroll down all the way down to Figure One. That's right. Uh, let's look at the fingerprint. Okay. Now this is interesting. Barely anything happening. Really. Okay. Barely anything happening. Um, super low amplitude. You're looking at a fingerprint that is really similar to the SIG silencer. You, and you can go back to that review and see. I think, yeah, it was review 639. You can go back and see that. But it's quieter. Okay? This is um, the, a, a quieter signature than that. It's similar in some ways and some features, but it's, 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 it's super low amplitude. Um, basically, a way to sum up the signature, if you wanted to be... At least, of, at least of the first round, it's pretty similar to the SIG silencer. <clears throat> yeah, but quieter. I mean, that, that's essentially <laughs> that, that's essentially what you're, what you're dealing with. The Hyperion is just quieter. And, and to get a feel for how it starts quiet and stays quiet, uh, scroll down to figure two. Yeah be a good way to show this so in figure two um, you are looking at pressure space just like figure one only now you have all the shots figure 2a shows all five shots and then figure 2b shows just shots one two and three okay they're both in pressure space it is here that you see in the totality of the signature before combustion takes place all the way until the combustion, the flow is gone. The extremely low signature amplitude. I mean, this is actually, it's a really good figure. The, the amplitude is amazingly low. Look at figure 2B. Okay, the one that's zoomed in when it has just the first three shots. The, the, the shots are very consistent. They're right on top of each other until the primary jetting happens. Okay, and that's when you get to see the first round pop in pressure space. And, that, and that's pretty important. Bystanders will be able to tell that it's the first round, kind of. I mean, it's <laughs> they can tell, but not. it's not super pronounced. It's, so it's not a huge FRP to bystanders, uh, you know, or the, the, the FRP at the muzzle. It's really not huge. But, you know, someone might be able to tell the difference. Now... And it's 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 difficult to see in pressure space simply because the amplitudes are so low. So go ahead and check out the impulse in Figure Three. Yeah, if you scroll further down, you can go to Figure Three A and Figure Three B. Now you're seeing the accumulation of impulse during the first shot from the extra air in the silencer. Okay, it it, it happens. We know it. We see it, but it's not extreme. Yeah, it's not extreme with the Hyperion. And I can tell you, based on the fact I have tested other silencers in this size class on 300 Blackout Subsonic, I can tell you that this is impressive performance. And, and I'm not speculating. Okay, I have data and analysis for 300 Blackout in a, in, a, in a backlog. And it's coming, okay? I was telling you, this this is Hyperion testing from the, from the initial program. Uh, and, and I have other manufacturer data too, and I'm telling you, you can read between the lines if you want. I, I'm telling you, the Hyperion is quiet. Okay, I, I don't know what else. I don't know how else to say that. <laughs> All right. So, 
remember though, remember and and old school OG podcast listeners might remember this. Remember when I was messing with semi auto three hundred blackout, and I was like, "Whoa, the rugged radiant is louder than it should be." I was like, "That sucks," and I had to go to the rugged surge to get something I thought was acceptable, just like to my ear, like shooting, like yard pop style with a with a seven inch barrel semi auto tuned. Uh, you know, with like, I was like, man, I was like, the radiance loud. I was like, that's not cool. You know, so I don't know if you remember me saying that. So imagine what I know now. Okay, I've tested a lot. So stay tuned for data releases to put this all in context. But I'm just, I'm just telling you a lot. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times with the, with the supersonic 308 reviews, some some people have actually said to me, manufacturers included, well, I can't tell a difference. I'm like, okay, well, your ears can. Just because your your brain can't doesn't mean your, your ears can't. And I can tell you right now, the difference in 300 blackout subsonic signature, not only can your ears tell, but I can assure you, your brain's going to be able to tell too. It's a whole different level. When you when you have less events going on, um, when you have subsonic rounds, you, there's a difference, guys. So buckle up for that. I promise. Now, how is the Hyperion doing this? How, how is it able to be so quiet objectively on, on this weapon? It, it, is it the coaxial chamber? Is it the blast chamber? Is it the mount? You know, it's direct thread. Uh, is it the? Is it how long the silencer is? Is it the shape of the baffles? Is it where the reducer is located? Where the flows combine? It's all of it is what it is. Okay, it's everything. It's the holistic design. It's not one, any one thing that allows the silencer to operate like this. And I, you know, one thing you need to understand that you may you may not understand yet because I release info like like a trickle of water, and I watch it run down through the cracks, and I watch it form a stream. <laughs> one thing you need to understand is that there are levels to silencer design. Are there good silencers out there by a lot of companies? Absolutely. Like, unequivocally, yes. You, you, you've seen some this year already from, from Pew Science testing. You, you, silencers that are eclipsing performance once thought to belong only to major brands. You, you've seen it happen, at least in Signature. Okay, you've, see, you've seen it happen. People are coming out of nowhere. They're making quiet stuff for the masses, and it's amazing. Okay, that's really great. And we've we've seen specialists, uh, we've we've seen good generalists over the past couple of years. We have we've seen a lot of stuff. We've seen a lot of different sensor designs and sensor performance. But I can unequivocally say, in all of my years of shooting silencers, and these past few years of testing silencers at the highest level. The, the most in-depth signature testing anyone has ever done in the world for silencers. I can tell you that the CGS Hyperion technology is some of, if not the most, advanced technology on the market right now. I, I, I'm I saying that based on my experience and what I've seen. The, the silencer you're seeing from CGS right now in its current form, isn't even at potential yet, dude. This is not even like, it's not like, oh, we made the quietest thing, we're done. No. <laughs> okay, I, I mean, I can say it with confidence, it's not even, it's not, I mean, it's not even done, really. If you wanted to, you know, if you want to talk about baking a cake, and you stick a toothpick in it, it doesn't come out clean yet. You know what I'm saying? You know that trick whenever you're baking a muffins or a cake and uh, you're cooking it there? 
and uh, you, you want to know if it's done, you, you, you stick a toothpick in it, you pull it out. If, 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 the, if the toothpick has um, cake particles on it, it's not quite done yet. That's one trick about baking. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, um, this silencer is doing things that folks really aren't understanding the scope of yet. I don't, I don't think you guys, I, it's, it's interesting. So I, I think some people say things like, of course it's quiet because it's long. It's like, okay, <laughs> well, show me another silencer operating like this in all flow regimes and then go back to that statement. Well, show me supersonic. Cool. Short barrel supersonic, long barrel, cool. Magnum rounds, cool. Subsonic, cool. Put put something through the Hyperion that, that can fit through it. Oh, what's that? You want to shoot on a machine gun? Cool. We'll do that too. Okay, so don't. And, that, and that's the thing. Like I'm I'm telling you, like I I do not use hyperbole, in, unless I'm making a joke, and I'm not joking right now. I want you to understand. I it's hard for me to convey to you how how quiet this is. I mean, I know the rating's high, but I'm telling you, man. But I gotta stop. I I, I can't. I have to be careful. Yeah, I get, see because I, I get accused of being a shill. You see, I actually and there's someone he publicly asked this on my on my Instagram account. This guy, ah, he's a kid. These kids, you know, not to be. I don't want to talk down to you folks and like. Also, uh, what's the word? Patronize. I don't want to patronize anyone, but these kids, man. They get on social media, and this guy asks, he says, why do I have CGS silencers on my Instagram feed sometimes more than other silencers? It's like, what kind of question is that? Like, I answered it publicly and directly. He said, it's because they're on some of my personal guns, dude. Plus, I take pictures of stuff to announce podcast episodes. So relax. Like, come on, man. Like, are you really? I don't care what you buy, dude. You throw all the silencers in the trash right now. I mean, do you even that guy that asked me that question? I don't know that he even owns a silencer. So, I mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? So, so you know, if if you do, sir, and you're listening, throw your silencer in the trash and uh, have a great day because it won't affect me at all, and I don't care what you buy. Um, and I also, I'm not going to bend to public opinion. And withhold my personal silencer choices to, for firearms I own, like to protect your feelings. Okay, like that's sorry. If you're looking for that, go go somewhere else, dude. Like I'm not gonna do that. I I don't have time. I don't have time to placate to child like childish stuff like that, like baseless weird accusations. Like it's so weird from ran and it's not even from people I know. It's just like random people on social media. Like I'm not gonna entertain your delusions. It's weird. And oh, the same thing with other and that goes the same for the sponsor companies. And those of you listening right now from the sponsor companies, you guys have no idea. I I I've I've been getting so much feedback from consumers. And it's not really feedback as much as it is like screenshots of sponsor companies saying stuff about this that is just so so unprofessional and so just it just mean weird stuff and it just it just show, it's almost like you know how like when you read something what's that term that pe- people use now cringe it's so cringe you, you read it you're like i can't believe someone say something like that it's so it just they just have no idea what it takes to do this and it's just so crazy so i can't even and that and that's you know, it's it just a shame because I want to show you these silencers and I'm like, what, I can't show. You know, I was I was putting the Surefire SOCOM uh, 556 RC2 on my rifle and I showed it like a bunch of times because I was shooting it. I just happened to be using the RC2, which by the way, I bought another, I bought a personal RC2 so I, so I don't mess up the test sample when I'm doing hooligan stuff. I bought one. And you know someone's gonna say, "Well, he it's because he you know, is in bed with Surefire." It's like, dude, Surefire won't even talk to me because I did the war comp stuff. I did. <laughs> I still love that RC two. I can tell that right now. I don't care what you buy. I bought an RC two, so you know I'm a, I'm a sponsor guy. I'm a sponsor consumer. I'm not gonna hide what I like because 
you, you know what? I already have. I already, I already don't post certain things because of how sensitive people are now. If I, because I'm under a microscope. If I say every word I say, every sentence I write on the website is under a microscope. Because they're just, those sponsor companies and those, they're just sitting there waiting for me to mess up. <laughs> it is so crazy, but I just, but, but, but I'm not going to. So how, how you like them apples? And if you really feel strongly um, about this, and if you have some kind of issue with the fact that like, I like to shoot silencers on my own time. And I, and I own guns that I like to shoot with silencers. And you, you feel for some reason I should not own uh, silencers from like one company. I should only own from another. Or you think that like I should I should only post pictures. Like I, I should tally the amount of times I show a certain silencer brand on my page on, on a social media, no less, that is on my cell phone. <laughs> if you really want me to like do it, then if you feel strongly about that. And like you have, you're like you know, Jay. I just, I just think that it's more fair if you show, if you think that. I want you to email me, and I want, I want you to be open to setting up a conference call, so me and you and your mom or your dad or whoever you live with or whoever else wants to be on the call, and pick your favorite sponsor company, invite them too. So let's all get on there. We'll sing Kumbaya. We'll do a Zoom meeting with webcams because I want to see your face. Let me talk about it. Is that cool? Okay. It goes for anyone listening to the podcast. If, if anyone listening to the podcast, uh, in, including the, the sponsor companies listening, if any of you guys want to speak about this, you you have my phone number. And, you, you've, and you've had it for years. But but you don't call or text. So why would you why would you why would you talk to the consumers about this and not me? I'm right here. I'm talking to you right now. Just call me. Okay, cool. Back to the review. Pew Science members, the folks supporting the effort, I put something special in here for you. That's right, in this review. I put something special in here for you. In addition to the at your waveforms, which are comically insane, I put a research note in there. I did. Let me see what it's called. Yeah. Research, re- research note three and four there. They're only there for Pew Science members. <laughs> Yeah, look at note four. For all you non-members, all it says is, uh, it, this thing is quiet, so be really careful. I just elaborate more on the member review, okay? Okay. Let me get a drink of water. Yeah, be careful this thing doesn't go off the rails. All right. Look at figure six. Let's just, we're, we're going to plow through this. Look at figure six. You can see graphically how this is stacking up, okay? The SIG silencer's quiet. A- anyone, like, I remember, I, re- I released the SIG data. That's it. You can't even buy that silencer anymore. That, Or maybe you can if there's old stock, but SIG stopped making it. A ton of people have it. It was out for a while. It, it, people know it's quiet. They're like, dude, thanks for releasing that data. It confirms my silencer's. I knew it was quiet. I was like, yeah, I know it's quiet. You, Why do you even need my data to tell you that? <laughs> but, you know, they do. So... Like I knew, I guess it helps them justify their purchase. I mean, a lot of people do that. That's fine. It's a human thing, and it's it's been at the top of this list for a while now because I just haven't been publishing a lot of three hundred blackout data. So people are like, oh my god, you know, it was so I that it went so far as to what happened it was a couple months ago. I was on Gunbroker, as I tend to do sometimes late at night. You know, we all have our vices. I'm, I'm on Gunbroker, looking to. Uh, um, spend money and I'm browsing the silencers see if there's anything cool and I see a, a an SRD 762 TIQD from SIG on Gunbroker and it was like I don't know what they were trying like five grand or something stupid three, three to somewhere like three to six grand for the silencer I was like what in the actual I was like that is not how much this costs um, or it should cost and I was, re- I, so I was like so I clicked on it and I started reading the ad for the SIG silencer and in that ad, they're like advertising, oh, this is the best silencer, da, da, da. And they're like, the quietest silencer tested by Pew Science to date. And so this was in a gun broker ad by some rent. I have no idea who this, these, these people were. And I was like, what? 
I think I mentioned this to some people a couple months ago when it happened. I think I posted like a social media story, like an Instagram story. I was like, oh my God, Pew Science is being referenced on Gunbroker. I thought it was cool in, in a way, but also very scary. And then I was like, I can't believe they're advertising this. And there's like, and at that time, there was there weren't, I mean, there was even less 300 blackout data on PewScience.com than there is now. I was like, they're really using that as a selling point? Like, I mean, it's quiet, but I mean, it's cool to use PewScience, but okay. That's what they did. I thought that was crazy. I thought I, I and, and so I'm looking at this chart now and it's, I just, I was reminded of that, right? So I'm looking at the chart now and yeah, the six times was quiet, but dude, the hyper is quieter. <laughs> I'm like, what? That's wild. And that, it's a big deal. Okay. And you know, what? another thing looking at figure six, that's interesting is a 300 SPS. 300 SPS is quiet, dude. That Surefire, that Surefire SOCOM 300 SPS is a quiet silencer on 300 Blackout. It is made for it, dude. It is. It sounds good. That is a cool silencer, but it's not SIG or Hyperion quiet, is it? No, it's not. Isn't that crazy? Now you have a scale for this. Like you couldn't do that. You couldn't really do this before, could you? Like I mean, you could. You look at peak DB. You're like, yeah. 140 dB, you know, you're like, you're looking at it, you're like, eh, eh, it's a couple dB, what's a couple dB, and then everyone's like, well, you know that if, if it is not 3 dB, you cannot tell, or, oh, it has to be 6 dB, and everyone, like, comes up with these, like, crazy, like, rules, like, for different parts of the scale, for the logarithmic decibel scale, that talk about, like, what's loud, what's not, like, what you can tell, and the people get these, these fights, I'm like, oh my god, dude. Like, relax. Like, none of you are right. <laughs> Just relax. You're all wrong equally. And so, uh, you know, that's why I made the suppression rating. We can actually give, you know, you know, one scale makes sense. And you look at this thing and you're like, oh, my God. We, we knew the SOCOM 300 was quiet. I mean, the Banish 30 Gold is pretty much sitting there, almost the same. A little bit quieter. So that's pretty quiet. The SIG silencer, who a lot of a lot of people have shot it, they it's it's about half a category it's about half a category quieter than the the Surefire and the Santra Central Banished 30 Gold. And then the Hyperion is half a category quieter than that. So when you look at like when you can and, and so this is an interesting thing to talk about like this, right? Because you look at you look at the 300 SPS, which everybody knows that is shot the 300 SPS on subsonic 300 blackout. Everybody knows that silencer sounds good, dude. It's quiet. Look at, you know, it's got an ear rating of 60.4, a muzzle rating of 58.6 in, 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 in the graph there. Then you look at the Hyperion. You're, when you go from a 300 SPS to a Hyperion, at the ear, you're going eight points up at the muzzle you're you're what are you going over 10 points up Th that's how quiet the hyperion is and and i'm not saying that oh why are you oh now he's talking about the surefire but he's not mentioning the banish or now he's, he's not mentioning the sig anymore he must like the surefire it's like no 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 you guys like i it's like sometimes i want to strangle people no the the reason why i'm i'm picking on the surefire and I mentioned it in this Hyperion discussion, is because the Surefire Sonster is so freaking quiet on 300 Blackout. And the Hyperion is a suppression rating category quieter. So now what I'm telling you is you have reference points now. And it's not only quantitative reference points with the suppression rating tied to hearing damage risk. Now you have product performance reference points of extremely well-known widely prolif proliferated products is what i'm trying to tell you you know what I'm understand one second <clears throat> yeah so i mean it's important right so it's it's kind of fortuitous that we have things from surefire and we have the oh, someone asked the other day they they saw they're like, oh my god, Jay's only done the, the half Nelson on 300 blackout. He hasn't done the half Nelson on supersonic 308. Why? What, what's the conspiracy? I'm like, I'm like, no, it's just it's because I didn't. Ha I actually didn't have supersonic 3 308 data for the half Nelson. 
all I had was the subsonic 300 blackout. And then, and then subsequently, I think I do have supersonic 308 data from the half Nelson somewhere. I think it, it might be a little bit quieter than a trash panda or something. It's like basically like, I think it's like one more baffle, whatever. It's not important. The, the point is like, had the half Nelson on subsonic 300 is like a good reference point, right? The surefire is a good reference point. The SIG is a good reference point. The, the Omega 9K, that tiny pistol silencer, is a good reference point because it's always talked about for 300 bucks on subsonic now for some reason. Um, these are all good reference points. And now the Hyperion is on that chart with it. So it's like, oh my God. Like you look at it, you're like, oh, we're, we're, we're sort of getting a good sweep, right? You're getting a good sweep through the market right now. And we're, we're not even close to even half done. I mean, it's insane how much 300 blackout data you, I mean, we could take every single 30 caliber silencer we've tested on 308 and do on 300 blackout. And I've done a lot of them. Okay. So you need to understand though, there's levels to this. Okay. There's levels to this. And, and that's a good segue into something else I wanted to talk about. There's levels to this in overall suppression rating and muzzle rating and ear rating. And one thing that I think is is really worth talking about is first round pop. It's it's one thing to be quiet on average. Okay, it is. It's another thing entirely to have really good first round pop suppression. And if you're in the subsonic realm, FRP can be super noticeable, dude. Like it because everything's quiet. We we you don't have a supersonic crack. It's a lot, it's a it the, the pressures are way different. The durations are way different. So FRP can I, I've said it before, and I don't mean to be I don't mean to be like hyperbolic or inflammatory but i i do think that frp can make or break a silencer on in 300 blackout i i and i'm not i don't think i'm the only one who thinks that as a silencer consumer i think that as an analyst i think that as an experimentalist i think that just because of what i've seen what i've heard and, and, and the firearms i've used and shot okay i do think i do think the frp is important um particularly with this cartridge on this platform when you look at figure six in this review and you see the, the top three, the Banish 30 Gold, the Sig, the Hyperion, you see those three and you're like, okay, they're close. Or at least the Sig and the Hyperion are close. They're closer. Like, okay, half category. But the Hyperion is doing things during FRP that the other two sponsors are not doing. And, and, and this is not... This is really, I'm, I'm going to say, this is one of the cases you really need to dig into the articles. You have to read because I, I want you guys to really understand the performance here. The only way you'll understand it better than reading the articles is shooting them side by side on this host on the same day. And that's not easy for many of you. That's why I write that. When I say read the articles, I meant like, dude, there's actually text in there, not the figures, but there's text to talk about the FRP. And if you remember, you get stuff that the public doesn't. A lot of people are like, well, uh, well I'm not going to join Pew Science because uh, they, he the, the members don't get that much extra. It's like, first of all, that's not why you join Pew Science. You join to support it. Second of all, no, the members get information that literally no one else in the world has. So if you can put a value on that, you you want you can if you want, but I'm I'm doing it for you. So, I mean, it's there's there's things that you really need to understand that you're not reading. Um, it's not easy for people to shoot the silencer side by side. It's just not easy logistically, and that's why we have Pew Science in addition to quantifying the the real hearing damage risk. Okay, so there's mul there's a multiple reasons why I'm doing this, and perception does not always correlate to hearing damage risk. Not always. Now, that being said, and, and there's reasons for that. We've talked about mapping PI spaces and yada yada, as well as psychoacoustics. Now, with FRP, there's some relative correlation, right? Because it's the same system, and you can tell if something is sounds different after the first shot. Right? That's something that you can kind of you can kind of get a feel for. 
Um, sometimes you can't really tell how much worse it is, uh, particularly with some of the louder systems. Um, FRP on average, or that's a weird thing to say, FRP in general will be apparent because you will most likely be able to tell when the suppression rating increases after the first shot. That's something that's relatively common. Um, an FRP is, it's really hard to hide it, and oftentimes it's pretty apparent. And 300 blackout, it'll, it, it, it will a lot of times be apparent. Now, not always, but because, uh, especially because of psychoacoustics, but a lot of the time, some of the variables that make it difficult are removed from from the situation in the subsonic flow regime, so it's more likely that you will be able to tell. Now, I did something in this review, I did something else. Um, since we're getting more data now, we're getting up there. Check out section three. I made a section three. Scroll down. Let's see, yeah, section three. So six point seven one point three. And when you go there, you can check out figure seven. There's a figure seven. And here, what I did, you know, I put several silencers that have been tested with both 20 inch 308 and 8 inch subsonic 300. Okay, and I put them all on the graph at once. And we, you saw the same type of figure back in the Hyperion K review. And, and the reason I did it back then. It's because it had been tested on tested on both platforms, and now it's like, okay, well, here's Hi the Hyperion. It's another one that had been tested on both platforms, um, and we just had uh, we just had the Banish Thirty Gold. It was due. I'm like, let's do it again. It, it 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 made for a good. I was like, yes. Now we can do another Figure Seven in one of these 300 Blackout reviews. It's going to be a cool way to sweep up the data set, and. This figure, and I, uh, there was actually, there were actually some comments on Reddit um, by a gentleman, um, which I, I agreed with his comment. Um, when he saw this figure, he's like, "Man, I can't wait for this figure to get bigger because we're gonna learn stuff." And I was like, "That was a, to, for me, that was a resounding absolutely. I concur. I think it's gonna get more interesting as we continue to go down the 300 blackout rabbit hole." I wanted to include it now, again, just in this review, to give you a flavor and a refresher. I just wanted to refresh your memory for the 30 caliber space. So we've been focusing a lot on the Mark 18 stuff. So I was like, you know what? A lot of people are going to look at this Hyperion review. I'm going to put this figure back in. I'm going to I'm going to see how how people what, what what thoughts people have from it. And and there's not a lot more. To glean from it than you gleaned from the last one it's a little, some little things here and there but um, and i talk about those in the article but uh, i'm kind of just letting this sit for for a while to see see who catches what um i think all in all i mean there's there's just so much data and i wish i i, I wish i kind of wish we had time today i think we're <laughs> look at the time we're already over an hour and in hour into the podcast and we're on the first topic um I think if you had more time, I'd, I'd, I'd want to dig into more stuff that's in the review. But I mean, I, I wrote, I compared stuff and I and I wrote stuff in the text you can read. I guess in summary, I'd, I'd probably say for 300 blackout use, you're really not going to be able to find something as well-rounded as this silencer right now, as, as the Hyperion. You're, you're just not. I mean, for subs and supers and other rounds too, like you're... I, I just don't know of anything else in the market right now that that can do everything as well as Hyperion, um, like as a total package. I, I mean, there might be there just something I haven't tested yet. Probably, I think. Um, I mean, there's always something better, right? But there's always something quieter, which is the goal. Like you want competition, you want things to get more awesome, you want CGS to improve, you want the Hyperion to get better, you want the Banish series to get better, you want. The Ultra 9 to get better. You want all the, the Surefire stuff, the Dead Air stuff. You want everything to improve. Like, that's like, we don't want anyone like resting on their laurels. Like, you don't want to see a Sansa Coast Sparrow like for 10 more years. 
right? Like that would be like one of the dumbest things you could possibly do, right? Because it would be like, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, like, you know that that's not the most efficient technology. Like, why would you keep, you know what I mean? Like, and I'm not picking on Sanchico specifically. I just happen to pick a monocore design with first round pop that is simple. And like, that's an example of like something that we know how to do things differently now. So why would you do that? It's like, it's like when, you know, like eventually, like what, in like 50 years, what? Everyone's probably going to be driving electric cars, right? Like, I don't want to. Cause I like my truck and my Corvette. Um, but event in 50 years, it, maybe I'll still be alive. That might not be likely. Um, we're probably all going to have electric cars if the, if the world is still here and we haven't destroyed ourselves. So you're going to look back on it and be like, why is that dude driving like a 76, like Chevy, like what, like for the nostalgia, like, okay. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, why are we not evolving our technology? And, and that's, that's what's going to happen. Um, you know, cause what, um, I mean, I, I don't, maybe cars are a bad example cause everyone does love classic cars, but let's talk about it in a different way. Like why are you still driving a car without an airbag? Or like, why, why are you driving a car without a seatbelt? <clears throat> You know what I mean? It's like Volvo. Volvo worked so hard on the seatbelts. No, but, but you know what I mean. But it's like eventually, it's like why are you why are you still going to use um, a twenty two silencer with first round with with a lot of first round pop? You know what I mean? Like that's the type of of stuff that I think I, I think is worth at least speaking about publicly. I know a lot of a lot of people don't like to say these things out loud, but I think it's you know, it, it's good to advance the market. I think market evolution is important. And I think that we are in the golden age. All right. So for now, right now, uh, as far as like all of the different flow regimes, the Hyperion is doing work. And uh, stay tuned for more stuff I've tested so you can get more in context, I guess. I mean, I, I'm going to keep giving you data. Okay, so this, remember, this was contracted work, and I released it, again, I released it with, the, it with suggestion from the manufacturer. I mean, there was, the, the public, the public demand has been insanity. The manufacturer owned the data, you see. And frankly, I had other stuff to do. We talked about it, I was like, well, when, when do you want to release it? And all the manufacturers listening, like, they tell me, when they want it released. And sometimes I suggest things. Sometimes I'm busy and I, I'm like, whenever you want, man, like I'll work it in. Um, some manufacturers, you know, don't ever release anything they do with me because they're using it for their own internal development. And sometimes they're using it for contract solicitations for like different federal, uh, local, state um, contract submissions, things like that. Um, so yeah, just this one, it just, this is the way it worked out. Uh, oh, uh, something I was, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I almost forgot to say this and it's some, someone picked up on it and actually I, I laughed when I saw him write it online. Um, this is a pretty simple silencer to attach to the mini fix because it's, it's tapered. The It's like directed to taper, right? So you 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 don't there's nothing no mount to mess with you just screw screw it directly to the gun it is amazing for that i love that and and I, the reason i was laughing the other day cuz someone was like oh my god like i bought i had a mini fix and i bought a hyperion and i completely forgot they were tapered and i went to i went to screw it on and i was like oh this is nice <laughs> when the guy said that i was like yeah i was like i bet that was nice the dude completely forgot that like the 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 sig the sig taper that 25 degree taper that sig taper is uh is common on on the mini the the mini fix and the the CGS hyperion so he he lucked out and you know what's really interesting along the same lines i was going to say and this is something else that i think people that just look at specs on the internet with regard to like dimensions and stuff don't really think about um 
it actually, when you screw it on a tapered barrel, it's not adding as much length to the, to the gun as you would think. And there's no extra mount with it because it's direct thread. You feel me? I've I've heard about I've heard people say, yeah the CGS Hyperion is really long it's like well it is it's a full size silencer but also it's a direct thread silencer with a tapered a tapered um, tapered mount interface so like if you screw on a mini fix well you don't have a, another mount sticking out the back of it okay so yeah you just put that in context and plus it's like really light too I don't know I think I said in the review it's less than a pound it's full size silencer so. I don't know. I, I, one of my buddies, he, he like held one. He was like, Oh my God, dude, I didn't know this thing was so light. I was like, I know people don't read. It's like, like go to your kitchen, like your kitchen food scale or something and find something that weighs 15 ounces and put it on the scale and then pick that thing up. That's how much the Hyperion weighs. <laughs> if he needs a frame of reference. Okay. It's like, we're, we're all on the same planet. So gravity is pretty constant more or less. So yeah. Um, that's pretty wild. So, I mean, the silencer is less than a pound all in. So, what does that mean? Okay, and this is not me, me being a shill or anything. What does it mean? What does it mean objectively? It means it means it's one of the quietest, lightest setups on 300 Blackout Subsonic, depending on what you're doing. Right? And with that, friends, I, I'll end this topic by saying, what a time to be alive, man. You guys should be ecstatic about this. It is. I, I, and we even talk about all the other stuff. I mean, I talked about the Hyperion on, on the other podcasts because I've, I've done other reviews. But go read about it, dude. It's crazy, man. That thing's like, it's quiet. But also, like, it's it's titanium and it's really tough. And buildup doesn't really stick to it because of the coating inside. It's kind of crazy. I have yet to meet anyone who uses it that doesn't enjoy shooting it just for these reasons. I mean, I, you don't have to buy one. Never buy one, dude. Never buy one. Take all the silencers you have and go recycle them. Go throw them in the recycling bin and be like, you know what? I'm not doing guns anymore. I'm just going to I'm just gonna crochet strange doilies for my tables. I don't know. Do something weird. But what I'm saying is like... <laughs> No, don't do that. That'd be crazy. Um, the the Hyperion is crazy, dude. It is, and it's quiet. And I do not own a thirty caliber gun that isn't fun to put the silencer on to see how quiet it can be. Like I, I just I put every like like if I get like a thirty caliber gun, I'm like, man, I wonder what the Hyperion would sound like on this. <laughs> And I don't think I'm alone in that. So, anyway, thanks for trusting me to perform this work, CGS. I I, I figure you're listening to this. Um, I I do mean that. I I do appreciate uh, you trusting me. Um, it's been a pleasure. Okay. Okay. Let's move into topic two. At a time of oh man, I can move this review here so I can see my thingy. At a time of one hour. 13 minutes and two seconds. Oh my gosh. How are we already an hour and 13 minutes in? Get more water. Okay. Oh man. And you know what? I'm I'm not going to run out of gas either because I'm so excited. Topic two, Pew Science 9mm subgun test hosts. Oh my God. First up, HK SP5K PDW. From Germany with love. That's right. Look at the picture with this podcast. What do you see? What do you see? You see German engineering is what you see. Sexy gun. Sexy technology. Old old tech. Old technology. But mature. Yeah. Mature technology. Wonderful. Wonderful technology. Roller delayed blowback technology. That's right, my friends. All its glory, SP5K PDW. It's one of my dream guns, guys. I don't... Semi-auto? Yeah, sure. Genuine HK. Yeah. 
for those of you listening to understand how special that is, it uh, Pew Science 9mm non-handgun host number one. I'm not going to say pistol caliber carbine. It's not that. It's a subgun. Semi-auto, but it's a subgun. The first, first subgun test host received an inventory. Definitely. It is. Let's let's do it, man. I think for the state of practice, roller delayed blowback brings about important data points. I've been I've been having a lot of discussions with people about this. There are a couple of different host candidates for subgun silencer testing. There are, guys. And frankly, none of them. None of them are going to be as mature or ubiquitous as the MP5 family of subguns. I don't care what you think you know. You're wrong. There's too many. It's too many decades of it, of it being a thing, it, and being used with silencers by and, and in the silencer community. It's just too ubiquitous. And I know you like the CZ Scorpion, but that thing may as well not even exist when we're talking about silencers, guys. That's not even CZ Scorpion. Now, nothing. Look, nothing against CZ, but relax. Talking about silencer, like what? Oh, you come to this podcast, you want to talk about regular guns? No, dude. This is a silencer podcast, so buckle up, okay? Now, there's the CMMG radially delayed blowback system. We, we, I, we've talked about it. It's cool. Theoretically awesome. But not as common as the MP5 platform worldwide. Not as common. And it's not even as of, you know what's really weird? It's not even as available as the HKs are right now. And you might be saying, no, uh, uh, my friend has one. Yeah, well, my friend has an MP5. So like, <laughs> I'm looking at the SP5K uh, 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 right here in my office. Okay? I can't. I couldn't do the same thing with the CMMG. Where am I going to get one of those? Okay? It's different. Like that's how that that's the state of affairs right now, and like what production is like, and, and what's proliferated the market. Now, is the CMMG cheaper? Absolutely. Does it work just as well for what we're doing? Possibly, yes. I mean, is is the AR a more modern and modular platform with more creature comforts? Yes, it is. But I'll tell you this much, guys. We we have to do the MP5 due to historical record. It has to be done. We can always go back and do some spot checks with the CMMG system later if you, if you really want to. But I, th- I think doing it the other way around won't be as cool, and I just don't think it's a good idea. Okay? Now, so that, that was one of the options. Okay, the CMMG. Now, we, 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 we couldn't do direct blowback. Okay, so that, so that takes out the majority of the new so-called PCC, you know, the pistol caliber carbine subguns on the market. Okay, it takes out it it it, it takes away the Scorpion from CZ. It takes away the almost every AR9 gun. Pick a flavor, Noveski Space Invader, whatever you want to call them. It takes them all away. They're a direct blowback. Okay, we want. What do we want to do? Okay. Let's get technical. What do we want to do? We want to delay blowback. Okay. And we want to do it without having to add a significant amount of recoiling mass. You feel me? We want something that people actually shoot. I can delay the blowback out of a 9mm AR with a with with a a, a 32 ounce recoil recoil system reciprocating system and you know it file fires from an unlocked bolt right the nine millimeter ar you know the bolt's not locked right you know that you understand that that the bolt is not locked it fires from a unlocked closed bolt you know that right you know that that's what an ar9 does okay i don't we're not going to spend this episode talking about why that's not good not a good idea but it's not a good idea now how do you reduce the amount of recoiling mass 
Well, you got you, you, it means that you you have to resist recoil impulse with something other than inertial resistance. You have to you have to use something other than mass for the for the system operation. How do you do that? Well, traditionally, traditionally roller delayed blowback is one method by which that's possible. Okay, one method. Now, if you ever messed with an MP5 bolt carrier, you can see how it's it's really not that heavy for what it's doing, is it? Yeah. And the recoil spring. You ever seen the recoil spring in an MP5? It's not super duper crazy either, is it? It's not super duper crazy. The bolt, that bolt, you know, the, the HK actually, you know what they did? It's clever, right? It's clever what they did. They... The bolt and the carrier are not they're they're not the same piece. They're they're separate pieces. Yeah. And then the bolt, the bolt fits on what we call a locking piece. That locking piece. It's 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 mechanically attached to the bolt carrier. And when you put that bolt onto that locking piece, when that locking piece is inserted into the bolt, what that does is it forces these steel rollers in the bolt. It forces them out of the bolt, both sides of it. And those rollers impinge upon a locking surface in the trunnion. And I, the word trunnion's weird, okay? It, it, it's like all you AR guys, it's the barrel extension, okay? The barrel extension of an MP5, it's kind of there's a there's this trunnion, and it has it has these sloped indentations, these machined surfaces. When you fire the cartridge, that is nine nine by nineteen, dude. This is nine millimeter. When you fire the cartridge, what happens? What do we create? Okay, we create impulse, don't we? We create pressure that starts to bleed down over time. Okay, what's the area under the pressure time curve? Impulse. So when you fire that cartridge, what's something's pushing back, yeah? The brass sitting there on the bolt got this bolt going one way then you got its reaction pushing back you got you got gas pressure pushing back there on the bolt there but the rollers in the bolt everything's together with a, with a, with a locking piece and the bolt carrier and the bolt the rollers that are in the bolt well they're they're protruding aren't they they're protruding out of the bolt, and they're sitting against the angled surfaces of the trunnion in the MP5, in that, in that barrel extension. You're, you're mechanically locked, dude. You are literally mechanically locked. Unlike an AR9, that is the only reason that an AR9 bolt carrier, and which is integrated with the bolt, is one piece. The only reason the AR9 stays closed when for, for like a little bit of time when you fire it is because of how heavy it is and the recoil spring dude the, and ar9 is literally unlocked it does not fire from a locked closed bolt it fires from an unlocked closed bolt it's actually super dangerous when you think about it the mp5 is locked mechanically the the rollers are forced out of the bolt by the locking piece and those rollers are sitting in that trunnion and they are locking the entire assembly from rearward movement, dude. So what? How do? You, so what happens next? Well, what do we know about impulse? Does it build? Well, yeah, certainly does. The bullet, the bullet is going, is getting pushed down the barrel. The gas is leaving you got a lot of impulse it's got to go the other way eventually 
eventually you're going to you're going to accumulate enough impulse that that bolt the pressure on that bolt is going to be so high that the rollers start to roll they have no choice but to start to roll along those angled surfaces of the trunnion because guess what can happen those rollers can get pushed back into the bolt if there's enough force okay so this is a mechanical delay the, and and this is this is sometimes not understood by people um and I, I i have yet to see someone explain it like this but but what's what's physically happening what you're doing is you're forcing those rollers against the trunnion so hard that and and it is the bolt that's being forced guys it is the bolt it's not the carrier a, a lot of people say oh yeah, well, the, well, the carrier is forced back they, they get the order of operations wrong no no what is what is the case touching it's the, it, what is the from the chamber the 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 case the nine millimeter casing is 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 in the extractor still of the bolt the bolt itself the bolt's pushing if the bolt's being pushed on what is locking the weapon the rollers what are they touching the trunnion what's on the other side of the rollers the locking piece in the bolt you feel me so this is all happening very fast but eventually you get enough impulse pushing back on that bolt the area under the pressure time curve gets high enough for long enough that those it pushes back so hard that something's got to give and the rolling resistance of the of the rollers on that mechanical anger angle is overcome they cam into the bolt and as the bolt continues to travel rearward the rollers are forced further and further and further into the bolt that's and that's all happening by the angle of the trunnion the trunnion recesses or trunnion pockets i don't i actually don't know what the technical i don't know what hk calls that but the little, the little recesses in the trunnion where the rollers ride as those rollers get forced deeper and deeper and deeper into the bolt it's pushing the locking piece out of the bolt okay the bolt continues to travel rearward the rollers are forced more and more into the bolt and as they're forced into the bolt by the trunnion angle they transfer that force and displacement onto the locking piece angled surfaces okay the rollers are they're they're forcing the locking piece rearward and the locking piece is connected to the bolt carrier and that angled surface on the locking piece gives a mechanical advantage to the movement of the lo of the locking piece and the carrier you see because now now you have angles playing it's almost like a lever in a way so the speed at which the locking piece and the carrier travel rearward after that happens there they actually go back up, and this is rough and you can do the calculations it's roughly it's it's four times as fast as the bolt moves is moving back <laughs> is that wild it's, it's really wild and so only after the locking piece and the carrier um only after the locking piece and the carrier travel rearward or rather after the locking piece is 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 sufficiently retracted from the bolt to, to make sure those rollers go all the way in can the entire system start the full rearward travel path okay so i just described something uh, in a very long way this is all happening very quickly but that's what's involved with unlocking an mp5 okay it is way different than a lot of other guns okay and to do that to start that full rearward travel of the bolt the locking piece and the carrier the carrier had to force the recoil spring to compress 
and have its inertial resistance overcome too. So it still has mass, just not that much mass, okay? So what did you do with the MP5 recoil cycle? What did you do when you fired that gun? Well, you had a delayed blowback event. Well, how did you delay it? Well, was, was, was it the recoil spring? No. I mean, was it just the real recoil spring? No. Was it just the bolt carrier mass? Well, no. No, it was the rollers, dude. The rollers being forced against the trunnion kept them there for a while until they rolled back from impulse accumulation crossing the threshold. When you cross the impulse threshold, the locking piece gets forced out of the bolt enough to move the carrier enough to compress the recoil spring enough <laughs> to move rearward enough to take the rollers out of the equation. The rollers become inconsequential in the recoil cycle. You see, only, only after the, the rollers are removed from the equation does the cycle uh, take flight, you understand? So it's my opinion. The most elegant delayed blowback system is this. This is the most elegant delayed system we have. Gas is not involved in the delay. It's only involved in the impulse load. You feel me? This is only mechanical lock with cylindrical rollers. It's smooth. It's beautiful. There's steel rollers. It's angled steel recesses with an angled locking piece. It, you, you have you have wonderful. You have tungsten granule filled bolt carriers. Why? Dead blow hammer upon the return struck to prevent bolt bounce. That's right. The recoiling system itself not being too heavy because it doesn't need to be. The, the rollers allow a delay to the blowback using the impulse from the cartridge to create the mechanical ballet. You don't have to counteract the impulse with inertial resistance and spring resistance on its own. No, you have the roller delay to help you. It's there from the beginning. The roller's the key. Roller delayed blowback. It's the holy grail of submachine gun technology. It is the holy grail, Okay. The chamber of the gun is fluted, dude. I don't even know. You need to understand. Look, I don't know if you've ever shot an MP5, but the ejected brass has lines on it, dude, similar to an HKP7. Why? Why is that? Why do you think they both have fluted chambers, dude? Let's think about it. The fluted chamber exists because you are extracting brass after a delay. Whether it is the the gas, the gas retarded piston delay in the P7, okay, which is a completely different operating system, or it's the roller roller delay blowback in the MP5. Either way, your extraction is occurring lower on the pressure curve in the chamber. So how did the Germans deal with that? Because they didn't want it to get stuck. They didn't want the brass to get stuck. They didn't want to start ripping off case heads. You feel me? So what do they do? Well, they wanted to allow gas between the chamber walls and the case. Yeah, they did. So when you look at a fluted chamber, if you looked at it um, in the in the in the in the in the rifling end, there's grooves to let gas go backward towards you understand in those grooves that's what the flutes are yeah they have a path from barrel to chamber that's how the flute geometry is is machined so the germans were like hold our beer we make great beer hold it for a second we're gonna allow gas to get between the chamber walls and the case the brass case. Why? Well, they're going to equalize pressure on both sides of the brass faster. Okay, they're going to equalize pressure. They're going to put. They're going to. The, the, you have the the high pressure from com, from combustion. Remember, the bullet had to leave the case. Yeah, there's com, there's high pressure there. Well, how do you how do you equalize the? And you're what are you going to do? Well, you're going to be expanding the brass against the chamber. Right. It's going to swelling that brass. Yeah. Well, now you're letting it, the chamber, the, the you're like, uh-oh, what happens, what happens if we want to pull it out? Well, it's going to, it's going to get stuck. 
What if you could force gas? What if you could force gas on both sides? <laughs> yeah, you float the case out, couldn't you? Those cases just float out, dude. Instead of expanding and swelling in the chamber and, and having and having the having the brass drag out of the chamber, they just float out, dude. They float out. It's elegant. It's beautiful. When you see a fluted chamber extracted and injected brass like on the ground at the range, you know, you know that was just wonderful roller delayed ballet, baby. That was just that was just a roller delayed blowback ballet at that location. You 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 could show up to a range and everyone's gone, and you look down at the ground and maybe the, they didn't clean the brass up, and you see you see fl uh, fluted marks on brass. You're like, oh, dude, someone was shooting MP5 here. Yeah. And you just kind of smile at yourself. You're like, you, you, you did. You shot that MP5, didn't you? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. You liked that. You liked that. Yeah, because it's amazing. And everyone that understands and shoots an MP5 understands how amazing it is. So, yeah, we're using the MP5, guys, okay? I'm going to test it with, with the K and the full size, and I'm going to do it with the German guns because that's what we're going to do. Okay? We're going to do it right. Okay, one second. I'm getting a drink of water. I'm getting a little, getting a little excited. Now, specifically, what we're gonna do? We're gonna do SP5, K, PDW, and, and SP5. Those are the semi-auto variants of the of the HK MP5 submachine guns. Okay, uh, the the the, the full-size MP5 and the MP5K. Those are the those are the German importable versions for civilian use okay we're gonna do that now we can get a little tricky so we just talked about how the roller delay blowback operation works right we did we talked about that we talked about how the impulse from the cartridge works against the rollers why it was pushing on the bolt that means the bolt makes the rollers push on the trunnion okay we talked about that Push on the trunnion resources, remember? Eventually, the impulse accumulates to a point that will overwhelm the resistance of the rollers in the recesses. It's, it, it is rolling resistance. It is going to happen. It's, it's going to push them. It's going to make. It's going to force them. They're going to have to roll further, and they're going to be pushed into the bolt. And when that happens, it's going to force them against that locking piece, and it's going to accelerate that locking piece and the carrier at four times the rearward velocity of the bolt compressing the recoil spring okay okay stick with me what happens when you add a silencer say it with me what happens when you add a silencer what do you change what do you change when you add a silencer to an mp5 or any gun you add impulse don't you on the ar the gas operated stoner system that we all know and love praise be to stoner we would say you add dwell time artificially. That's what we would say. Okay, the MP5 doesn't have a gas system. So on the MP5, you're adding impulse, just like on the AR. And that impulse that you're adding is going to act on the bolt. And then it's going to act on the rollers, forcing them against the trunnion. When those rollers get forced into, the, into that bolt and the locking piece gets forced out of the bolt by those rollers and your impulse curve hasn't diminished enough because there's a silencer on the gun, <clears throat> what's going to happen, guys? What's going to happen when your locking piece has moved enough to let the rollers all the way into the bolt and nothing is delaying the rearward blowback anymore? What's going to happen? What if your impulse curve isn't low enough? You're going to accelerate your entire carry group faster, aren't you? <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah, because originally, originally, the gun wanted to have that move rearward. The carrier group at a certain time. It was like, you know, this recoil spring set up the mass of the carrier. I, I want this to be moving at a certain time. But then you put the silencer on it. What did the silencer do? Your silencer made that happen and then kept the party going after the lights were already on, dude. The guests were leaving. The Your silencer's, your silencer's a house guest in an MP5 that overstayed its welcome. That's what, a MP, that's, that's what a silencer on an MP5 is. 
The music, Sansa just turned it up, dude. Impulse. The lights are on. The party's over. The lights are on. Everyone's like, oh man, they're like, oh, they're squinting their eyes because it's so bright. And the 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 is like, yeah, Sansa's drunk, dude. It's a drunk friend. You just crank the stereo and everyone's like, oh, dude, what is this guy doing? This guy is super drunk. Come get your friend, bro. No, that's what happens when you put a sensor on a roller delay blowback gun. You're just, it's like a rave with a drunk guy when the lights are on and everyone's leaving. And he's like, this guy needs to relax. That's what a sensor does to an MP5. So how big a deal is that? How big a deal is that to an MP5? Well... On a full-size MP5, you have a normal-sized carrier and quite a long recoil travel, so oftentimes it can be okay. But what does it depend on? What does it being okay depend on, guys? Well, it depends on the back pressure of the silencer. Because how, how much impulse does the silencer add to a system? Well, it depends on the back pressure. Depending on the silencers, you guessed it, Omega metric. That's right. And what would this be? This would be Omega-9. Not Omega-7.6.2. This would be Omega-9. Remember, in the MP5, you're delaying the blowback. And if you have too much blowback, or too much impulse, after delay, then you could get more noise, you get higher velocity rearward. What could that do? What, what are the practical implications of using a silencer on an MP5? What could you do to the MP5? Well, it could be louder. Sound out of, the, out of the ejection port, possibly. Maybe maybe you get, it's a little louder. Maybe it's not quite delaying the blowback as much. You need more delay because of the extra impulse. You've seen that happen. Where have we seen that happen before, right? What else could you do? You could force the carrier back so hard that when it hits the end plate and the little... It hits that little polymer rubber buffer thing like at the at the inside of your stock plate there at the mp5 when that carrier comes back that hard and hits that end plate you know what happens at that point your bolt was being pulled backward by the carrier mass with a locking piece when that carrier hits that end plate that bolt and its momentum it's going to be the bolt's mass times the velocity of that entire system. That's going to slam that bolt back into the carrier. And what's going to happen then? Those rollers that were recessed are going to be forced against the locking piece. And those rollers are going to slam outward into the size of the receiver. And there's no trunnion there. That's just a re There's just receiver rails. And you can actually get what we call roller marks in the receiver happens in the hkg3 rifle all the time the 308 okay you can you can actually plastically deform the steel receiver of an mp5 in nine millimeter from over function it's not cool you can permanently damage your i mean you can fix them but it's not easy but yeah you can actually but you can actually deform an hk receiver with nine millimeter it's not as common as 308, but you can do it. It just depends on the back pressure and the your. It actually depends on a couple things with regard to your recoil system and and some uh, things you can measure to see if this is a risk. But as you can imagine, that's what the full size MP5. Now, as you can imagine, the K sign, the K guns. It's not as common with the full, with the K guns, the PDW guns. Those are actually more sensitive because they have a lighter carrier and they have a shorter travel distance. So it's it's less spring distance to dissipate that extra impulse from high back pressure, the like for, you know from a high omega nine silencer. So what? So HK did something about this. That they're super smart, and they, in their benevolence, they gave us a way to slow down the system more. You can tune, you can tune an MP five in a few ways. The easiest way. You can change the impulse threshold of when the rollers get forced into the bolt by the trunnion. It's hard to change the trunnion 
and you don't want to change the rollers for this because it's not practical to swap them out quick or quickly and you need a longer duration change okay so you can change the locking piece that's right you can change the locking piece to one with a shallower angle the shallower the locking piece angle the longer it will take for the locking piece and the attached bolt carrier to accelerate rearward remember you have that four to one velocity ratio right the locking piece having a shallow shallower angle is it's going to change that it's going to make the it's going to make the the ratio change so you're, you're going to further delay the system operation so if you get an 80 degree locking piece instead of the standard 100 degree well now it's 100 degree 100 degree locking piece for the pdw yeah i think it used to be 110 now it's 100 degree the hk aren't there's an armor's manual the hk and shout out powerful riley at hk um he actually sent me um an up-to-date armor's manual i had an old copy i'm not sure if we have the same copy but his is nice pdf thank you riley i appreciate your help you're a gentleman and a scholar engineer at hk brilliant guy um the hk armor's manual tells you it's appropriate for increased impulse from a silencer to use the 80 degree locking piece it's impulse area under the pressure curve we, the pressure time curve you've seen Pew Science HK was using it in their manuals and armors instructions since the 70s and now you know what it is when you read it because you understand the sound sound standard and you know what impulse is always comes back to impulse and you know I was talking to Riley today he was telling me that you know and I've seen this before you know where armors HK armors will say that you actually don't need the 80 degree locking piece for the pdw and the the mp5k and it's really just to slow down the rate of fire and you don't necessarily it's like no well, i don't buy that just like i don't necessarily listen to um a mechanic um that works on cars for everything i don't necessarily listen i don't necessarily listen to armors for guns on everything either i i trust mechanics and i trust armors but also, when I know how something works and why it works, I I tend to um, want to test it myself too. Okay, because there's a reason why that locking piece is developed, and I, I, I know what can happen to 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 receiver damage, and I understand how delaying the opening of a chamber more during sensor use can be beneficial for sound signature. So. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get I'm going to mess with different locking pieces for the test hosts, okay? I'm going to see what we can do. And I'm going to test in a configuration that's appropriate for us and appropriate for the guns, okay? And w will a standard locking piece mess up your HK gun when suppressed? I don't not necessarily, so don't freak out, okay? Is it a good idea to understand which locking piece you're using and why? I think yes. Okay, is it good uh, it, you know, it, it is good to understand the signs of overfunction on MP5. It's good to understand how to check your bolt gap too to make sure you're in spec. And, and, and it's good to understand how to fix that too. And I have some reference videos I can show you some, for some excellent armors like uh, James. He's a good guy. I can, I can show you some good videos. But um, again, that they're just armors and they're going to show you the mechanics of how to check it. Okay. It's good to understand that stuff. So... I will say the MP5 is a wonderful weapon, and when I say MP5, I'm, I'm talking about the SP5 too. I just the, the the system, whether or not it's full auto for me. This is how how much you can tell I love the MP5. I'll spend thousands of dollars to get a semi-auto version just because I know it's made right, and I don't even think about the fact that it's not a full auto. I had people DM. I posted a picture of it. People DM me. They say, "Are you gonna? Oh man, are you gonna?" change it to full auto i said no no it's gonna stay in the way it is i might maybe i i get another one to make a machine gun out of but no man this gun's so beautiful i don't it's it's so awesome i don't even care that it's semi-auto that's how much i love it that's how much i love these guns the answer to whether or not you should own a roller delayed gun is always yes Okay, so join me. Join me as we test one of the greatest weapon systems of all time. What better thing to include in the Sonsor Sound Standard than the MP5 operating system? Let's learn together, baby. I'm excited. 
All right, let's move into topic three. At a time of one hour, 49 minutes, and 26 seconds. That's excessive. Incredible feedback from dealers, consumers, manufacturers, even YouTube reviewers. Shout out Alabama Arsenal. Powerful Pew Science members. Worldwide. Thanks, guys. I mean it. Um, you know, hu- huge shout out to Alabama Arsenal. They did a YouTube review of the Helios QDTI. Okay. It's a sensor that I've used a lot. Um, probably used it before most people even knew what it was. And in that Alabama Arsenal review, they um, they said some, some really nice things about Pew Science in their video. And uh, I'm really honored. And you know, those guys shoot a lot of silencers. And they have experience with a ton of them. And so when they endorse Pew Science, it's a pretty big deal. And they are honestly reporting their experiences with a lot of silencers. And they're they're validating anecdotally a lot of the data in the standard. And that's real user experience. And that's from a trustworthy person that really loves guns and is in it for the love of the game because you see it and i've spoken with them before you know and that's cool that's a big deal so go check them out they follow pew science ever for a long time and i think it seems to be helping helping them understand the sponsors and it's helping their audience too so thank you okay so thank and thank you to the pew science members and the dealers and the consumers and the manufacturers out there they're they're seeing this happen too they're all involved this is just so wonderful okay so i hope i hope you found the technical discussion on today's episode informative it's a lot i covered a lot um i i wanted to finish this in less than two hours i think we're we're gonna do that okay <laughs> So please, if if you if if you have any questions about what we spoke about, and especially about this HK stuff, you know I'm sick for it. I love it, and I know it's expensive, and I know a lot of people are going to be upset. They say, "Oh, Jay, I can't afford an MP5, and why are you going to test?" It's like, believe me, the data we get and the way we bound it is going to be so useful for you, regardless of it, of this. Is it's, it's going to teach us a lot about the silencers, and that's the point. Okay, it's going to be awesome. Okay, we're going to have a lot of different platforms for 9mm. 9mm silencers are really going to be put the, through the ringer. So stay tuned for that. It's going to be amazing. It's, they're really complicated. It's going to be a lot different than rifle. Okay, so buckle up. We're really going to start to flex here at Pew Science, okay? And and the and the, the, the silencer world is going to benefit, okay? So stay safe, friends. And I will talk with you folks again soon. All right, bye.